Um, this is not the first time I'm speaking on prosperity. <clears throat> if you look in my channel, you'll find um, at least maybe two or three other videos where I've spoken on the subject. But um, rather than ask you to go back and dig, I also felt the need, you know, to refresh on this subject. You know, um, the other videos, you and um, it's possible this video will link to them later on. But um, for now, you know, I think it's important for us as we go into the new year, 2023, to reflect on what is true. And um, I'm going to take a, a number of videos like that just to re recalibrate expectations, understanding with respect to teaching. So that uh, whatever foundation, whatever we are building upon this foundation will be sound by the grace of God. Prosperity does not mean what you think it does. You know, if you were to ask arbitrarily what is prosperity, most people will say, you know, something along the lines of money, wealth, affluence, and things like that. And um, whereas that appears to make sense, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> Fairly confident if you look in the dictionary, that's what you will find. See, there you are, I was right. You know, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, or Cambridge Dictionary, it says, prosperity, the meaning of prosperity, the state of being successful and having a lot of money. You know? Um, and that's what most of us think when we think in terms of prosperity. And that's what a lot of pastors sell from the pulpit. So that when you hear things like, you know, you, God will make your way prosperous, and when you when you hear things like "I wish that you would be would prosper and be in health as your soul prospereth," that's what a lot of us are thinking, and that's what a lot of pastors sell. But that is not what prosperity means. You know, some of you know, especially some some language has changed meaning over the course of time. But if you read these passages in their context, you will find that what the Bible is talking about is different from what most of us think when we read it. Because we already have that pre-thought in our minds. And then we finally get to the scripture and we try to impose our thoughts on what the Bible says. I always like to start by saying, when the Bible says, No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. What does the Bible mean? If you want to replace that word prosper with what we assume prosperity means, which is riches. So, does that mean that the Bible is telling you that no weapon that is formed against you shall be rich? Obviously not. That's not what the Bible is saying. So, the Bible is not talking about you being rich when the Bible talks about being prosperous. What does the Bible mean? Let's go back to the verse itself and allow the verse itself to speak to us. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Okay, what was the weapon formed for? To kill you, to destroy you, to harm you. So no weapon that is formed against you shall kill you, destroy you, or harm you. So does prosperity mean killing, destroy? No. It's a function of what the weapon was designed to do. No weapon that is designed to do such shall be able to do such so prosperity really is what you are designed to do now if you use that understanding and replace it everywhere in the bible that you find the word prosper or prosperity it suddenly makes a different meaning than being rich no weapon that is formed against you shall achieve what it was designed to do. God will make your way achieve what it was designed to do. I wish that you would achieve what you were designed to do and be in health even as your soul achieves what it was designed to do. Can you see now that if you just read the Bible itself rather than imposing your opinion on it, it tells a completely different meaning. Therefore, you see, you need to understand this. From both God and Satan's perspective, prosperity does not mean being rich. 
it means achieving what you were designed to do. So if you were if if you were designed to be a shoemaker and you are in the place of a bank manager, the world may be clapping for you, but you failed. You did not prosper. Aha, I know I'm asking for trouble. People will struggle with that concept. If God designed you to be a wife and you are intent on being the husband in your home, you are not prospering. You are failing. You are in rebellion. You are operating against God's design. In Judges chapter 6, one of Gideon's son, sons spoke a parable which illustrated this thing very well. He said the, king, the, 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 the plants were planning to elect a king. And they went to all the big plants. I don't remember the specific names. I know one was, I think one was the olive plants. One was, uh, I don't know. I, so I'll just use some arbitrary names. They went to the Iroko tree. You know, they went to the big, big trees. And they were like, come and be king over us. And the trees answered with wisdom. Said, am I going to leave what God has made me for? Where God has placed me? To come and be ruler over all the plants? Am I going to leave my place as a man, as a father, as a husband in society to come and be president of the United States if that is not what God called me to be? That is rebellion. That is failure. Even though the world will clap for you and think it is prosperity. A lot of us have wandered away from where God intended for us to be. Doing things that God did not intend for us to do. And while the world is excited about it and giving you awards and accolades, you are in rebellion. You are not where God intended for you to be. Let me give you the perfect test illustration. I think it's uh, Genesis chapter 42. Maybe it's 39. I'm not sure. It's there on the screen. The Bible says that, that Joseph... <laughs> was brought into Egypt and he was in the house of Potiphar as a slave and the Lord was with him and Joseph was a prosperous man. Please help me understand how do you in the world on earth, how do you for the love of all that is holy call a slave prosperous? Because the slave was doing what he was designed to do. Because the slave was at the place where he was supposed to be. He was not yet a king. He was still about 13 years away from being king. And the Bible says he was a prosperous man. Why? Because A, the Lord was with him. B, he was where God wanted him to be. If you read Psalm 115, if I recall correctly, the Bible says God sent him to Egypt. With his hands bound in chains. It was where he was supposed to be and it was prosperous. My dear, if you are in your husband's house as you are designed to be, you are prosperous. If you are a man who presides over his family and does the responsibility that God has placed upon you, which is to take care of your wife, teach her, his, bring his word to her, raise your children with the truth of the Lord, you are a prosperous man, regardless of what the world thinks. And whether or not you have riches, whether or not you have money, it does not matter. From Satan's perspective, Satan does not give the first piece of crap if you are rich or poor. Satan does not care if you are rich or poor. If you recall correctly, when Jesus was being tempted, one of the temptations was, all the kingdoms of the world have been given to me. Jesus did not stop him and say, you are a liar. He said, and I can give it to whomever I will. That means a lot of people who are rich in the world have been given those riches by Satan. And many of us think that that is a measure of whether they are right with God. Error. Now, he said, I can give it to whomever I will, and I can give it to you if you bow down and worship me. Jesus' answer, of course, was, Thou shalt worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. It is written. Where am I going with this? Satan offered Jesus all the riches. He offered Jesus money, prestige, recognition, resource, which many of us will jump at. Am I sure that I will not fail that test? 
Well, there was once I was tempted with it. I think I passed. But my goodness, may our loyalties not be tempted, tested. May God, we will not be tempted more than what we can bear. I have every desire to be a billionaire and I'm working at it. But I am submitted to God, however the Lord wants to lead me. So he offered Jesus money, Satan. And in the end, Jesus denied it and leaned on God. But what was the converse? In the Old Testament, what did he offer? When God challenged him with the life of Job, he said, you didn't allow me to touch him. If I touch him, he will curse you and die. God permitted him and he touched and he took all the resources away from Job. Making Job into a pauper basically overnight. See? What was the objective? Just like with Jesus, he was trying to separate Jesus. He was trying to separate Jesus from God by Jesus worshipping him. And likewise with Job, he was trying to separate Job from God by Job cursing him. And how did he do it? He took the money away. With Jesus, he offered money. See, Satan does not care. Whether you are rich or poor, does not care. As long as you don't have a good relationship with God, as long as you can curse God and die, as long as you can bow down and worship Him rather than God, that's Satan's objective. So for those of us who are after riches and money and wealth, I think my next video as we gear up and go into the new year will be about money. You know, that foolish statement that many of us quote from the Bible Two of them, money is a defense. We are going to read it in context. And uh, money answered all things. I also have a video on that. We are going to read it in context. And we realize that that's not what the Bible is saying. You see, what made me go there is that I was discussing with my wife earlier today. And I realized that, well, it's an oh, it's been a while since I spoke on these things. It's not such a bad idea if those who are just coming up, those who have just joined this channel, those who are just coming around. You know, come to knowledge of these things and are able to speak it and understand it themselves. So I'm going to stop here. Prosperity is not about money. God does want you to prosper and he does want you to be rich. But he is not going to enrich you if you have not passed certain tests. He said, who will give you your own when you have not been faithful in another man's own? So who will give you the true riches when you have not been faithful in, the, in those of another, when you have not been faithful in little? You see, God is not in, God. God is not. God is just not going to put it in your hand until you have shown that you are worth it. Well, you are worth it. Until He's just not going to. That's God he said. The heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant. But he is put in the hands of tutors and governors until such a time as appointed of the father. Until the, until the child is mature, even though he is the owner of everything, he is not going to get it. He is going to be treated like a child. So even though God intends for you to be prosperous, my dear, the way to be to prosperity, no, rather, rather let me say rich, rather, the way to, to, to being rich, now that's not prosperity, by the way. Prosperity is achieving what God intended for you to achieve. So that's more, that's the more important thing. The way for you to be rich or to be prosperous, and I'm not saying the same thing, is for you first to learn the lessons that God wants to teach you. Even Jesus, even Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Even Jesus endured the cross, despised the shame because of the glory that was set before him. And that is what is required of us, all of us. That is what prosperity is, achieving what you have designed to achieve. So if you spend your entire life finding it and then running after it, it's been a life worthwhile. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Like this video, share this video, leave a comment, ask a question, insult or abuse me. It's a new year. Welcome aboard. Uh, we, are, we are in for a beautiful ride. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.